the first thing is how you position the patient. Now, I gen what I generally, the cardiologists, what they would do is they'll position the patient so that the heart gravitates towards the left. Okay? Now, this will be nice if it's ideal, but in critically ill patients, it may sometimes not be possible to position the patient. So, I would just do it in any position the patient is in, even if sometimes they are in the right lateral position to some extent, even then. Okay? I very rarely change the patient's position right at the beginning. Okay? Uh, but depending on if I, if I don't get good enough images, then I do try and change the position. That's number one. Second, I try to map out the heart. Okay? So just like how we start off, pause please, we want to map the heart. Now, sorry, even before that, for every cardiac echo, you must always put the ECG on because most cardiac, most machines, they will record the cycle using the ECG. And if you don't have the ECG on, what that will mean is often you'll have real good real time images, but when it takes when it stores a loop, it may store a loop like this. Mm. It may misinterpret the muscle artifact or the movement artifact to be a cardiac cycle, and you'll have something similar to a ventricular fibrillation, and you can't interpret it at all. Okay, so always have the ECG. This, that's number. That's one reason. The second reason is the timing of the cardiac cycle, often you need the QRS complex, okay, to determine which one is systole and which one is diastole. You can do it without ECG, but ideally, it will be nice to have that. Uh, uh, we often use the ECG flag. Now, this is a G Vivid Q machine. Now, I'm not really going to go into the specifics of the machine because each machine is different. It's like driving a car. Whether you have a BMW or a, or a, a Kia, you finally have you know, you need to know where the accelerator is, the brake is. So for each machine, you just need to know where the 2D button is, okay? Then where the gain is. So in this machine, this is the gain here. Where the depth is and then the M mode button is. So that's, you need to know some basic things. Can you pause, please? Um, okay. The next thing is understanding the probe, okay? In this, each, in every machine, the probe has two sides, okay? One will be, one is where the marker is, the probe marker, which in the GE machine, it comes with a light as well. In many of the other machines, there won't be any light. You'll just have a groove, okay? This is important because this side, the, 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 in the orientation, You'll have one part of the screen where you have a marker, screen marker. And the screen marker essentially is the same side as the probe marker. Okay, this is something you would have seen in your physics video. Okay, now this is always superficial, this is always deep, and the orientation therefore depends on where you keep your probe. So if you keep your probe from anterior to posterior, then the superficial will be anterior, the deep will be posterior. If you grow, go from uh, the flank, then the superficial will be the lateral and the deep will be the medial or the right side and the left side. Okay, then this, these two sides are the probe marker and I just call it the anti-probe marker. That's, that's just my terminology. Okay, now for the parasternal long axis view, what we want to do is have the gel, okay, and the probe marker, I will generally have, I will want to, I'll expect Gunawan's heart to be somewhere here. Okay, this is my expectation. Therefore, I'm going to keep the probe in this direction. Between the right shoulder or the right mid clavicle to the left hip. Somewhere there. Okay. So, as I said, I'll keep it, it'll be cold. So, I'm going to keep it slightly high, it'll high up. And I'm now going to map his heart. I don't know where your heart is, so I'm going to start mapping it. So firstly, as I'm coming down, this here, this is a beautiful lung, okay? This is a pleura. Then I'm now coming down, 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 down. As I'm coming down, I'm getting an image of the heart. But what you can see is 
the bottom 10 cent 12 centimeter is unnecessary okay so optimize the depth for the first screening image have a depth that is about 5 or 10 centimeters deep to the structure of interest and I will store this okay but from the next image onwards focus on the structure of interest so the structure of interest here is if that's the structure of interest I'll have a depth just deep to the pericardium so so now I have much better detail okay so now what I'm going to do is as I said previously I go down 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 till I lose it okay and then I come back up to the place where I think I had a good view okay so here now next is I will try and optimize the image okay I'm going to try and optimize the image so uh, I forgot to say how I hold the probe the way I have been taught is to hold the probe between these two fingers like this and stabilize the probe with the other fingers okay so once again these two fingers go and hold the base of the probe and they actually rest the hand on the patient's skin and the other two fingers will stabilize the probe so this actually gives a good amount of stability the probe won't move so now I'm going down I've lost the image so I'm going to come back up 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 in that area okay and now I'm going to get I'm going to see where I get an image that I will that everything will be nice and perfect okay so what I want is if you focus on the screen and one one you can see the screen as well what I want is this structure here is the most superficial structure and that's the right ventricle okay the right ventricle must either be round or it must be a flattened oval okay then you have the interventricular septum and this is the left ventricular cavity and the left ventricle must be nice and cylindrical okay now do you think that the right ventricle is uh, round or flattened oval I'll increase the gain okay what do you think see how it's almost oblong like this like a sh okay and and second look at the shape of the left ventricle is it nice and cylindrical and you should actually not be able to see this apex contracting okay so that means what does that tell you this is oblique this is also oblique so therefore what I'm getting is an oblique slice okay so what should I do I have to choose a different plane so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move up and see see I've, I've gone up a little bit one intercostal space up so Chris if you can focus on the camera again now here what I've gone what I've done now is from that image I've deliberately gone up superiorly one intercostal space okay what do you think now is this nice and round or flattened oval the right ventricle what do you think what about the left ventricle is it nice and cylindrical okay can you see the apex see the apex it's see it's contracting even now it is still not completely symmetry or cylindrical I'm going to go up one more intercostal space and see what's happening to this here sorry it has become long see it's become long it you can't see the posterior wall anymore yeah. and can you see this structure here sorry one minute can you see this structure here that's the tricuspid valve of the so that's the right ventricle that's the right ventricle okay that's the right atrium now it's on one edge of the screen which edge of the screen is it it's along the screen the probe marker so what should I do if I want to bring this if, now just for teaching purposes I want to bring this structure to the middle of the screen right. which way should I move should I move towards the probe marker or should I move away from the probe marker mm -hmm. towards the probe marker because this structure is very close to the probe marker mm -hmm. so the probe marker is facing the 12 o'clock position okay so if I move up a little bit I, I should be able to get that structure 
moving from here to the middle of the screen okay now can you see what what view is this it's a right ventricular inflow tract view now inflow tract is on the right side of the body the outflow tract is on so what should i do and look at the left ventricle the left ventricle is almost round here okay so what should i do i have to now remember how what i told you about the inflow tract it's on the right yeah, side okay. so i have to tilt the probe slightly towards the left shoulder and now i'm getting the a little bit of the left ventricle mm -hmm. can you see that yeah okay now it's still not round mm -hmm. so so it's still not long sorry it's not cylindrical so what could it be that can be maybe i have to rotate maybe if you think of the loaf of bread i what i want is a long slice mm -hmm. of the loaf of bread i'm going i'm al always getting an oblique slice mm -hmm. so maybe i have to rotate so i'm going to rotate to the left side or anti clockwise and see how yeah. when i do that this has become long so this is how you construct an echo you do not memorize things like third intercostal space yeah. 11 o'clock position or something okay. you can you always get the see firstly map the echo okay map the heart so firstly so here it's lung it's lung here okay go down heart is beginning to come go further down heart is beginning to come go further down now this is your very as you go down can you see how the apex of the left ventricle has come in the middle mm -hmm. so your apex is somewhere here mm -hmm. and with that i'm already catching the apex okay. so now for the parasternal long axis view for the parasternal long axis view this is the lv apex mm -hmm. and this here where you have the big vessels and all that that's called the base of the heart mm -hmm. there's no reason why it should be called the base i think because this is called the apex that's other side mm -hmm. is called the base mm -hmm. the parasternal long axis view is along the base of the heart if you start seeing the apex of the left ventricle it means you are too inferior you are somewhere here you want to be this is this is where you want to be okay okay so that's how you get the long axis by firstly going right up so firstly hold the probe in such a way that you you know most people it will be the long axis so somewhere along the 11 o'clock position the probe marker faces go inferiorly very very slowly very slowly along the left sternal edge and then see if you want you can actually stop here because this is a perfect long axis just for teaching what i generally do is i actually go one or two spaces below because i deliberately want to find if there is a better window elsewhere okay but having found it i go back up and then i make sure that the walls the, that this is the right ventricle is nice and either round or a flattened oval mm -hmm. the left ventricle the wall should be pa parallel can you see how towards the apex especially it's not parallel it's coming together more mm -hmm. and so that's what you should do for that is just rotate a little bit and as i'm rotating what's happening here okay. what's happening here what is this the tricuspid that's the tricuspid yeah. valve and see how round this has become mm -hmm. okay i've got the inflow tract view in advertently if i've got the inflow tract what should i do i should tilt the probe yeah. slightly to the left side so chris if you can just focus on this now so i've got the inflow tract view which is this angle mm -hmm. so slowly as i'm tilting i'm going to use my right hand to show how i'm tilting so i'm tilting the probe slightly to the left and then and i get the long axis oh. of the left ventricle if i do the other way if i tilt towards the left shoulder i'll get the outflow tract view see that's the outflow tract view and how do you differentiate look at the valve the valve here is opening towards this structure 
So this is see this is the inflow track view, and the valve here is opening towards the right ventricle. So that's why this is the right atrium, this is the right ventricle, and the the tricuspid valve is opening towards the right ventricle. On the other hand, here. If I'm tilting towards the opposite side and getting the outflow track view, see how this valve is opening away from the right ventricle and that's opening into the pulmonary artery. Okay, right. So this is how you get the long axis. Okay, now, very, if you're very experienced, this is how fast you can get it. You start high up, just move, there. Okay. In the beginning, you'll take your time. You'll go, you'll go slowly, search, 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 search. And don't hesitate. The biggest mistake that people do in the beginning is they just get stuck at one point. Mm -hmm. Don't get stuck. Just go anywhere, all over, okay? Mm -hmm. So, see, I have a good view here. However, Chris, what is wrong with this? What can you see here? Mm -hmm. And what do you see in the RV? You can see a little bit of the tricuspid. Can you see a little bit of the tricuspid? Yeah, okay. So again, that, that just means I've tilted too much towards the right hip. So I tilt slightly towards the left and that's it. That's enough. Okay. So all, so if you see experienced people, they just keep the probe and they'll get a, a good parasternal long axis. Yeah. You'll take time. Now the short axis. Okay. So we have already what, what, established what? that. Okay. You can stop and... Uh, not pausing. Okay, stop and then the short axis view we can do it separately.